How are you doing today? I really, really want to know, how are you doing? Please, could you please just comment and let me know how each of you are doing? Maybe you're not used to commenting. I'd love for you to start today because I love to see who's on. I monitor these every single day unless an emergency happens. Hey, so uh, we're going to have an amazing time studying the Holy Spirit today. Some big picture um, doctrine about who he is. So, Peter. Wednesday, hey, it's more like Friends Day. Why don't you find a friend, get them on here, share this time that we have prepared for you with them. Take a minute, share this. By the way, how do you feel about Governor Baker's uh, reopening plan? Is it what you thought? Um, whether or not you're happy, I just want you to know, let's make the most of this time where things are just, you know, been shut down. Listen, what I mean by that is make sure that you do a deep dive to get uh, strong in the Lord. I've talked to people that said they have never been physically healthier, They've never been um, more in depth in their time with the Lord and knowledge of the word. So let's not let this time go by without actually realizing that this is a time when I can really get to know the Lord. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't already, please do. We're gonna look today at uh, more attributes of the Holy Spirit as it's defined in Isaiah chapter 11, verse two. Now, I wanna, I wanna give you a little background. When you read the book of Revelation, you will find in very, you know, quite a few uh, locations that in chapter one, chapter three, uh, chapter five, I believe it is, where it says the seven spirits around the throne. And that's like, what does that mean? The seven spirits with a capital S, I believe. Um, well, Here's what you need to do. Make the connection to the Old Testament because I believe this is the way we interpret that. In Isaiah chapter 11, verse two, Peter is about to read that. We see what I would say like the seven-fold identity of the Holy Spirit or attributes of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so Peter's gonna read that, take note, Isaiah 11, two. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Okay, so here's how I believe we can interpret all those um, references in Revelation about the seven spirits. I believe what it's talking about is this is like seven attributes of the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, functions of the Holy Spirit. It's not comprehensive, but they're major ones. Let's think about the first one the Spirit of the Lord. It just simply means what we have been defining now for a little while this week, the, uh, the, the fact that the Holy Spirit is divine. He is the Spirit of the Lord, he is, he is God. So number two, the Spirit of wisdom. Now in Deuteronomy of the Old Testament, chapter 34, verse nine, we see a reverence, the Spirit of wisdom. We see a, a reference of how Daniel, I'm sorry, Joshua uh, had a spirit of wisdom. Could you read that? Yeah, now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. So the Israelites listened to him and did what the Lord had commanded Moses. So there's an impartation through the laying on, on of hands. That, that's not just a New Testament thing that was happening in the old, especially there. 
So when, when Moses laid hands and prayed over him, there was an impartation where the Holy Spirit came over uh, Joshua with a spirit of wisdom. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom. So when there's an impartation of the Holy Spirit, we actually can gain from the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Again, we talked about he dwells inside of us. Mm. So you have access to the wisdom of God the Holy Spirit who lives in you and abides in you. Also, we see this in uh, one of the deacons in Acts chapter 6, verse 3. Could you read that, Peter? Absolutely. Brothers, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them. So when we're, when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we're New Testament people, we also can have wisdom as well. God's wisdom can be imp is imparted to us when, you know, so um, we have to access that as, again, we talk, we, we study the Word, the Lord, the Holy Spirit reveals the Word to us. So we actually can, in a relationship with the Holy Spirit, access His wisdom. How about this, number three, the Spirit of Understanding. Look at Daniel chapter 5, verse 12. I was going to go to a New Testament reference, but for time's sake, we're going to jump right to the spirit of understanding. Daniel chapter 5, 12. You might know who Daniel is. Daniel was an exceptional man. Listen to what that reference says about him. Verse 12, this man Daniel, whom the king called Belteshazzar, was found to have a keen mind and knowledge and understanding, and also the ability to interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve difficult problems. Call for Daniel, and he will tell you what the writing means. So here we see, as it says in Isaiah 11, 2, that the Holy Spirit is, is the spirit of understanding. And um, that means uh, we see Daniel was able to have he has an, has an excellent spirit. Why? Because he was connected to the Holy Spirit and he was able to have a great understanding. He could interpret dreams. Um, think about like, the, what's the difference between wisdom, understanding, uh, sorry, knowledge, uh, understanding, and wisdom. Mm. Knowledge is attaining facts. Understanding is interpretation of facts and wisdom is the application of facts. So uh, Daniel had access to the Holy Spirit, therefore he was a man of understanding because the Holy Spirit is a God of the spirit of understanding. Let's look at the fourth attribute, the spirit of counsel. John chapter 14, verse 16, Jesus is telling us he's going to give us a helper. Could you, could you read that? And I will ask the Father, and he will tell you another, he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. So that translation interprets the helper as a counselor. It's like, it's like a lawyer is supposed to be a counselor, right? Mm. An advocate. So the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of counsel. By the fact that he abides in us, lives in us, means that we actually can gain counsel daily from the Holy Spirit. You know, when I ran a business, I would depend upon the Lord for counsel on the daily affairs of business. Now, there's some mothers listening. You need the counsel of the Lord as you operate as a mom, as you function as a wife. Um, maybe you are a business owner. You can access the counsel of the Holy Spirit as he leads and guides you, as you walk with him. Um, I love that, the spirit of counsel. Number five, we see the spirit of might or power. Zechariah 4, 6, once again. So he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. So the Lord Almighty, the Holy Spirit is God. He has power. We saw his power released in Acts chapter 2 in the New Testament. We see that we can access the power of the Holy Spirit. And now when we understand that, we realize that we're so weak, we reach the limits of our capacity. We have not yet tapped into the capacities of the Holy Spirit. When we're weak, he is strong. How about number six, the spirit of knowledge? Let's read that. We can see that in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom, to another the message of knowledge, 
by another by means of the same spirit. Okay, so we know that we can actually have a word of knowledge from the spiritual gifts that come from the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is a spirit of knowledge. Uh, I love the Old Testament. Uh, a man named Bezalel. Read that, Peter. As uh, Exodus chapter thirty-one, verses two through four. See, I have chosen Bezalel, son of Uri and son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with skill, ability, and knowledge in all kinds of crafts, to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze. Yeah, um, right there you see that the Holy Spirit is giving him knowledge, right? Just like we can get a word of knowledge as a gift. Um, Ephesians 1.17, I would love to read that. The Apostle Paul writes to the church at Ephesus. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Yeah, so we, we can gain uh, that spirit of knowledge, revelation from the Holy Spirit so we can know him better. How cool is that? Mm. Lastly, uh, Isaiah 11, 2 gives us the fact that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. This mm. is so important. Listen, uh, we don't have to fear COVID-19. We don't have to fear man. Jesus said, don't fear man who can destroy your body, mm. but fear him who can destroy your body and cast your soul into hell. When the Holy Spirit is in us, he gives many times warnings um, when we're paying attention when we're listening, we, we have to be careful that our conscience is not seared where we no longer can hear his voice. That's very important. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit will always guide us into the fear of the Lord. It doesn't mean that we're like afraid the Lord's going to squash us or whatever, but no, it means that we have a holy reverence and a sense of awe for God. So the, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Uh, so that's what the Holy Spirit will do because... Mm -hmm. The, the fear of the Lord is, begin, is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, the beginning of so many things. We have to start with the fear of the Lord. Mm. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Oh, this is so good, so good. Um, we're going to wrap up today. Uh, so glad that you're with us. Again, just please, every day, just go ahead and Comment below, let us know what you're getting from the teachings, what you think about it, what God's saying to you. Uh, I love you. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless. As we sing this new song, I want you to remember that your testimony is powerful. Your testimony has shown that God has moved mountains for you. Tell it loud. Tell it proud. Use it as a weapon to fight against the evil forces of the enemy in your life today. Let's sing it together. I saw Satan fall like lightning I saw darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over Is my name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power Still the miracle that I just can't get over Is my name is registered in heaven All my praise belongs to him forever This is my testimony from death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony, this is my testimony. Come together, sons and daughters, bought with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father, our God. We'll finish what he started. Yeah, God, we'll finish what he started. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. 
I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony this is my testimony oh this is my testimony if I'm not dead then you're not done greater things are still to come oh I believe if I'm not dead then you're not done greater things are still to come oh I believe if I'm not dead then you're not done greater things are still to come oh I believe if I'm not dead then you're not done Greater things are still to come. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Oh. This is my testimony. Oh, this is our testimony. Oh, this is our testimony. Oh. Isn't God so good? Hasn't he done so much for you? Just have an awesome day, church. We love you. Spend some more time in his word. Spend some more time praying. Just learn to love him even more. Have a great rest of your day. See you later, New Hope.